Welcome to Context Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over the silk screen that we made last time, the custom art that we imported and put onto the silk screen. We're going to move that, move that to a different layer today. Now this is a process that involves actually editing files. And so if you're not comfortable with that, then you there might be some other ways of doing this. I'm not quite sure on what those would be, but uh, I know there are some plugins for this kind of thing as well. And that might be something that you want to check out. I think it's an Inkscape plugin, SVG to Shenzhen or something, something along those lines. I don't personally use it because I'm pretty used to this method. And I'm not saying it's the only method, but it's one that I use. So let's take a quick look at how we do this. All right, so this is what we actually imported last time. We had made this image. Now what we want to do is we want to move this to the copper layer. So let's take a look at how we want to do that. First thing we're going to do is actually open up the file. So this is actually the file in my library here. And so I'm going to actually just go into a, uh, an editor here. Usually an editor with find and replace is a, the right thing to do. And what we have here is, let me make this full screen here. Here we go. What we have here is this is the actual, these are the polygons that were created when we did the outline. So basically, we went through and we said, here's the threshold that we want on this, uh, on this shape that we imported. And in this case, there are a couple different polygons. Why are there multiple polygons? Well, if you look at this, this is one polygon, this is one polygon, this is one polygon, and this is one polygon. And so there's multiples in here, and they're all on the silkscreen layer currently. So what we need to do is we need to actually move those to the copper layer. And if you see that they're, the way that the program tells that they're on the silk screen layer is via this. There is a layer f dot silk screen. And so what we want to do is we want to replace this and put this on uh, the f, f dot cu it's called. And so let's just go. And this is why I said use, use something with a finer replace. We want to go in and say oh, let's actually we can just highlight it. Where'd it go? Here we go. So we want to highlight this. We'll copy it. Control H. And then we want to replace this with f.cu. And using the entire thing here <coughs> allows us to make sure that we're only replacing that entire word. So let's try replace. That was good. We're going to actually skip these two at the top because these are actually the markings that are on the board. So we're going to skip that, find next, find next. Oh, it doesn't like that. OK. Maybe not the whole word. Let's see. Oh, weird. OK, so something about that is slightly different in the top versus the bottom. So we're going to replace this one, replace that one, replace that one, and replace that one. And you see those were the different ones we had. Now, what we have up here, this is the, this is what I mentioned in the last video, where we have a graphic and then the number. So if we wanted to actually assign a schematic symbol to it, we could do that. And then it would, you know, it would, it would be uh, annotated as G1, G2, G3, whatever it is. And then it would be associated in the layout. That's a good idea to maintain things if you hit that F8 button a lot. And then also, we could change the name of this. So we could actually give, the, give it a name so that if it showed up on the silk screen, we could do that. But in this case, we see both of these are actually hidden layers. All right, so let's do a save as here. OK. Now, this is something that's important, too. Make sure that you actually do save it as a KiCad underscore mod. Last time I did this, um, it was uh, because it, it says a text file here, it saved it as .text. So we'll go to all types. And then we're going to call this KiCad. Uh, FCU, and then KiCad Mod. All right, let's hit Save there. Let's go back to the folder, just make sure it looks good. So there we go. It looks pretty similar here. And now what we want to do is we want to go in and open up our editor. So we're going to hit O. We can do it one of two ways. We can hit O, or we could just add a footprint like this. I'm going to hit O, click to start. Oof, man, my, my computer monitor is a little bit weird. But we're going to select by browser, move this up here. Come on. It's not moving very nicely today. OK, and then we're going to go down to the library where this should be. This is the test board library. And now what we have is testboard.fcu. It is not previewing because it's because uh, of the window, sorry. There we go. And now what we see is we see that these are on different layers. So let's go and do that kind of thing. Let's double click. We'll add it in here. And there we go. So now it's on a copper layer. Now if we go to we hit Alt F or Alt, Alt 3 rather. We can open up a 3D view. And when we do that kind of thing, now what we see is when we look at this, the copper is actually underneath the solder mask. And so if we wanted to do the same kind of thing again, what we would need to do is we need to actually add a layer that is the f.mask layer, and then, <clears throat> and then put it directly over top of the copper layer. So let's see if we can do that real quick. So we want to, once again, do f. Nope, that's not right. So now we'll, we'll find a replace for f.cu, h. And then let's just double check our layer name. 
So it's f dot mass. This is the one we want here. Okay. Okay. Find next. Let's say replace, 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 and then we'll leave that the top one as well. That's just a, that's just one of the default ones. Then I'll say save as. Same kind of thing again. We're going to do all files. F dot mask. Okay, save. Then we'll go back over here, and hopefully we can add another component. Select by browser. Wait, my windows are all messed up today. Sorry about that. Come on, windows. There we go. Okay. Now. What's going on with this thing? All right, there we go. F mask. Now we see it's a different layer color. So we're going to put that one in here. We're going to sync it right over top of this one. And what I normally do is if I if I really want to get this right, what I do is move the grid to something really big, right? So if we go to one millimeter, so we'll move this one. No, we want to move the actual lo logo itself. Put it on the grid so that it's nice and easy to match up. There we go. Now when we go over here, what we see is we actually now have exposed that area of the copper. We can, we, can move, we can move this top one a little bit, so let's move. If we move it a little bit off, you can kind of see, see the difference here. You see how that basically it opened up the mask in a different spot than the copper is in that case. So we do want to actually align these two things. So when they're aligned, now when we send this off to the fab, the copper will be underneath, and uh, it'll actually be exposed because we've pulled back the, the solder mask in the same way. Now we could achieve the same effect if we just had a big sheet of copper and we just removed the solder mask, but sometimes you want to have the shape be exactly the same. And so that's kind of nice here. So I, as you can see, there are tons of ways that you could kind of combine these different things together. Basically, you can have different layers interact with one another. You could open up some of the solder masks, but not others. You'd have the copper look underneath. You could even have, you know, bare... Uh, FR4 exposed if you want to. There are almost no limits to how many different combinations you can have for doing this kind of thing. And like I said before, there are lots of great examples. If you go over on Twitter, follow the Badge Life uh, hashtag, or you know, just follow. And I think the Badge Badge community in general, people that are doing artistic things with boards. Uh, another good one is Boldport. Uh, Boldport, a uh, Sar drummer who does Boldport, is just a fantastic PCB artist, and uh, and I think that that's a a great way to to get some inspiration for your next design. So if you want to learn more about how to, to add graphics and other things to your design, you can go over to contextualelectronics.com. We do a lot of this stuff when we're making boards, not just uh, you know logos, but also some artwork and other graphics that might be useful for your design. This also kind of applies to, this is just kind of a small hack for, for adding other features and making it a little bit more extensible using KiCad. If you want to learn more about the program itself and what's under the hood, you can always go to the KiCad forum. That's forum.kiCad.info. Or you can show up to the KiCon, which is coming up April 26th and 27th in Chicago, Illinois. That's all for now. We'll have more videos here about graphics and KiCad in the future.